Craig, who um, featured in that little trailer there. Good morning, Stu. How are you, Troy? So nice to be here, brother. Great, great, great. Wow. A little bit emotional watching that. Seeing other people cry usually triggers me, uh, just like (laughs) vomiting does or... (laughs) Yeah, it's a bit of a it was a gut wrenching uh, interview and clip, um, but yeah, certainly thanks so much for sharing it, man. Hey, that's that's great. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Uh, yeah, tracking really well. Um, yeah, you know, suffering lockdown as we all are, so going a bit bloody stir crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, no, look, I'm I'm doing really well. Um, yeah, that was that was November last year. Um, yeah, so as, as I said uh, through the clip and in the interview, you know, like we're, we're, we live in a really amazing country and um, fortunately there's there's amazing healthcare and, um, you know, and I've, I've been a very humbled recipient of that healthcare and, and, and really pleases me to stand here um, with without deficit um, as a survivor of stroke. And and even a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack, I had a, I had a mini stroke again uh, two months back. Um, right which uh, unfortunately, um, you know, physically it, it did very little, but mentally, as you sort of mentioned in the lead up to, to me joining you today, did a lot in terms of smashing me mentally, you know, it, it just sort of really highlighted I'm not out of the woods yet. Did you, So did you think you were out of the woods? Um, no, um, unfortunately but, not. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry, my, I should probably refer. Did you think you're out of the woods leading up to, to that time or have you been told after your first episode that, hey, you ain't out of the woods yet, so just keep uh, Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm still at risk, uh, unfortunately. Um, I've got a, I've got a uh, blood clot in my leg, so I've got a DVT in my leg, right. um, which um, occurred sort of late last year. Um, and uh, so my stroke came about because of that DVT, um, uh, which got through, unfortunately, got through a hole in my heart, um, which uh, I didn't know I had either, and, and, and it's called a, a, a PFO, uh, I'm not great at acronym, acronyms. It's a it's a holy heart for oh, those watching okay. at home, for yep, those playing yep. at home. Um, it's a very common um, thing uh, about a, uh, apparently, you know, and apparently percentages are made up on the spot often. But apparently, a third of the population have have this PFO, and essentially, what? it's a it's a little flap between the two chambers of your heart. And it's just it formed like it's it's part of when, when you're born it just doesn't close properly, right? right? So the fact I've got that hole in my heart paired with a DVT in my leg mean, meant that the clot got through to my brain. They have to patch up my holy heart, um, and and once they patch that up, that will sort of you know uh, really shore me up in terms of um, you know preventing risk of, of stroke again, particularly from clot. Um, so once they patch up my, my ticker, um, then uh, hopefully my leg will. Um, Will, will sort of simmer down as well. I've been on blood thinners and lots of different drugs um, since November last year to try and look after this DVT. But it's it's a pesky little thing, Troy. It's a pesky uh, thing. It's not. <laughs> I'm wearing some funky stockings all the time to try and. Um, well, really? well, they feel comfy, but uh, you know, and they look bloody amazing. Um, no, uh, so I'm trying to look after it that way. Um, but yeah, it's just about shoring up my, my ticker. So I've, I've actually I've only just got a date for for my, my ticker of procedure. I got that that date last week. I, I was on a wait list, um, and because of lockdown, everything's blown out. All these all these sorts of procedures um, are really blown out. But um, unfortunately, slash fortunately, that I had the, the little mini stroke TIA mm. um, four weeks ago. It sort of it puts me in a different category, a higher risk category. So I, I get my heart patched up, um, which is you know um, really exciting to be able to sort of show me up. You're minimising kind of kind of what's happening in, in reflection of other people out there that have had things a lot worse which is probably a a, a real reflective um response to of, of who you are trying to get perspective on things you're not as bad as others we use that quite often um but still is it a time did, is your world changed from that first moment is it oh, very, 100%. is it just yeah. it's not minute it's very serious oh it's it's so significant you know um facing immortality troy you know is um it's something as a 40 year old bloke, you know, we don't do at all. Mm, you know, I think, mm. I think when you have kids, you, you kind of maybe think about it a little bit, sure. you know, cause uh, for, like, you know, at that moment, something in the world is way more important than you, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I think when you become a, a parent potentially, um, uh, you know, you, you realize like how precious the world is and, and, and how much of a gift um, life is. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. When you, when you're sort of confronted by trauma uh, and, and mm. such a health event, I think you really, um, you know, have to have to confront that, and something as significant as stroke. And my only experience with stroke prior to that was that of my, my pa, who you know um, 
bless his cotton stock, passed away like 30 plus years ago. Um, he had a stroke like when I was in primary school, you know, and um, yeah, right. and that left him really impaired, you know. It, it robbed yep. him of, of his mobility, of, of, of his right side. It robbed him of his memory and his speech, um, you know. So that was my experience of stroke. And then he stroked again 10 years later and died. Um, you know, so that um, so when when I was having my stroke, like I, fortunately, I, I knew the symptoms. Um, yeah, fortunately, right. I. Uh, what well, uh, even though yeah. you, you knew them just embedded in your head from Yonkies thirty years ago, and you no, knew- no, fortunately, um, yeah, one of my colleagues at work. Um, so I suppose it's, it's a twofold. You know, one of one of my colleagues at work, uh, another young bearded fella, yeah. um, ha- had a stroke about five years ago, and and since then has. And he's had a massive health journey as well. But since then, he's been a real advocate for stroke awareness and, it, um, and has run stroke awareness program, or like um, sessions at work, health checks. Um, right, right. You know, so be- because because he was um, such a, a stroke awareness advocate, um, I was I was informed about stroke. I was informed that young people can have strokes, and um, and I was informed of the symptoms. You know, um, I've also been involved in the Western Bulldogs Sons of the West Men's Health Program for. For, for donkeys years as well right. I've, I've been a facilitator in that program and they've they, they talk all things men's health you know and um and again because of that um i had a level of awareness so so when i was unfortunately this 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 very fateful morning when i when i came out to say good morning to my kids and and things started to go pear-shaped um you know i was able to sort of stop and um freak out but absolutely realize that that something was happening you know and um mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, as as it said in the in the bit before me coming on, um, you know, I was I was able to sort of really understand like this is neurological, this is something strange, you know, mm. like there was that three core symptoms, and um, you know, I'd sat down on the couch, and that's when I I, I was doing the shoulder shake, and um, and that's what my wife could see, you know, and then she came over, and by the time she got to me, I couldn't talk, but as soon as I couldn't talk, I think that that for me absolutely meant that I was having a stroke, you know, and I was able to slur through this 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 trapped mouth you know i knew what i was thinking um i couldn't say it i just couldn't get it out my mouth was trapping everything but i slurred out stroke and i slurred out ambulance um and she was able to get on the phone to triple zero um fortunately again um while while she's on the phone to triple zero that like I, I, I tend to say like the glue started to ease i could start to talk a bit more oh, wow. so i was like i'm okay i'm okay and, and, and at that stage my kids were, were, were quite upset so I was able to sort of talk to them to try and calm them, you know, um, just sort of talk to my daughter, you know, I'm okay, you know, sit with me, hold my hand, you know, let's yeah. breathe. <sighs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, wow. it was, um, it was, uh, yeah, as I, as I said, it was very horrendous. Um, but, Funny. you know, I think, um, yeah, once, once I got to hospital and, um, you know, they confirmed it was a stroke had scan and stuff. And as I said, again, in the bit, like I got this uh, clot busting drug, um, it, it did its job and it did its job really quickly, which was um, so amazing. And again, that's the, such the importance of time. Um, yeah, 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 to get on it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Did you think about maybe considering shaving your beard because the other, other mate had a beard? How dare you? How, How dare you? I know, I know there's, gotta, a, there's, a, there's a line, the you know, <laughs> I brought this up with my specialist. I did. I said, look, you know, I'm no, I'm no scientist, you know, um, <laughs> but I see a, a clear <laughs> distinction. We are bearded men. I've researched, you know, I do the online <laughs> research while sitting on the toilet, you know, and it's you could, free you as could well. probably, you, you could probably free. build a conspiracy out of it. I, I reckon there is that there is a distinct line between bearded, like <laughs> ruggedly good looking, um, cheeky men um, who work in the same organization and stroke bank. There's, there's a direct correlate. A hundred percent of the bearded men who worked in that area. And talking about it too. You guys shouldn't have been talking. You shouldn't have been talking about it so much. No, Don't you talk, talk about, about things because you manifest no. it. That's right. Happens, well, that's right. No, not at all. <laughs> um, but but again, you know, fortunately because of that, you know, like I mean, because the, you know, the the the, the awareness that, that is really sort of um, promoted is is really simple. It's that fast acronym. You know, there's acronyms everywhere, but fast is a really lovely yeah, go, and easy go. Break, one. Break it down. Break, break it. it down. I'll break it down for you. Fast. It's face. So we look for that facial paralysis, you know, and that's that really common um, symptom that you hear about where, where, the, where you get the facial droop. So fa- F for face. That's, um, my has their face, face. That's my wife's Sorry? happy face. That's my wife's happy face. 
It's a bit droopy. <laughs> the, tr- the angry, no, not angry face. Oh, there, there's a distinct droop. <laughs> All right, Troy, stick with me here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Arms are important as well. You know, as again, as I said in the bit, sometimes people get paralysis in one side. And and what they did with me all the time, they're like, lift your arms, lift your arms. You know, can you lift both your arms? That's a real, it's an important symptom to know. Can you lift those both arms? If they stand up, can they? Are they standing up? Like, oh. you know, are they off balance? That that can often happen as well. Um, S is for speech. Um, and as, as one was, was my key symptom, um, it, like my speech was, was obliterated. My mouth was glued shut. Um, I also like to think an S, the, the hidden S is smile because they always get you, which comes back to that facial droop. Ah. So think about speech and think about smile. Can you smile? Can you show your teeth? Um, but can they talk and can they understand you? Because it's neurological, sometimes these symptoms mean that they can't understand what's what's happening in front of them someone might be talking to them and and and, and the stroke uh you know uh, i was going to say victim the person having the stroke um mm. can't understand and t is for time so face arms speech and time very simple acronym really important to know but really important for people around you to know as well mm. like even after particularly after my stroke i thought you know how the importance of having people understand be, like what those symptoms are because it's not often that the the, the, the person having the stroke can identify that it'll, it'll be the other people it'll be the people around them seeing the facial droop yeah or your debil- arm. your debilitate you can't you can't alert because you've you've got your speech and your hand hello you can't do that and you can't speak absolutely so stage. the importance and, and particularly around your loved ones you know knowing that stuff and and again that that stroke the stroke can actually impact so many people like any any age like yeah. I, I didn't know before having my stroke the kids can have strokes Right, crying out loud, right, 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 you know, right. like it's 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 pretty full on. Like I don't think it's as, as anywhere near as common, but it absolutely happens to kids as well, which is mind blowing. Um, but you know, forty year old, absolutely, I was, uh, you know, prime candidate. You know, I'm, I'm a dude as well. I carry a little bit, a bit extra pud. You know, puts yeah, me in sure, a certain sure. category. It's been in my family. Puts me in a certain category. You know, but um, I certainly would have never anticipated having a stroke. Is there anything that you can do to self assess? Um, at- um, than, well, I suppose it would be, it would be a similar, yeah, I mean, I suppose it's a similar sort of thing. Um, you know, if, if you are by yourself and, and you feel like, um, you know, that, that something's strange, something's going on, absolutely. You could, you could test yourself with that acronym, you know, can you, can you, can you actively smile? Can you, is you, you know, because if your face sure. isn't working, you can't show your teeth, mm, you know? Mm, mm. So, you know, do it, do a bit of a smile to yourself in the mirror. If you're thinking that's something's going on. Give your arms, like raise the roof. Can you raise the roof? Can you bring them both up? Yep. You know, again, like easy to sort of self-assess. Speech, yeah, absolutely talk out loud. Yeah, try, um, yeah. I'd, and, I'd... And, and if in doubt, you just bloody get on the phone and you call triple zero. No one has ever, ever got in, got in trouble or no one ever has ever died from embarrassment. You know, if you call triple zero and someone comes out and, and says, no, you've just got a numb arm because you've been sleeping on it. You know what? Happy bloody days. Sorry, mm. I keep saying that bloody. Um, I know it's a PG show. No, bloody, um, bloody's acceptable. That's good. Oh, good. Yeah. Excellent. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, but that's the thing. Like, I think we, we can be a bit, you know, like risk averse and a bit fearful of like dialing that triple zero, but just do it. Like, that you can't afford not to. As, as, as I said, that time is crucial. Um, to, to get to get to the like a hospital to get the scans to, to highlight it if it is a stroke um, yep. and to get that drug into your arm if it's practical for you um, because that clot buster drug obviously works for certain types of strokes um, you know um, strokes uh, around sort of blood clots um, but there's other strokes that, like including like around blood uh, like bleeds in the brain that clot buster drug doesn't work obviously um, because it's not about breaking up a clot it's about tending to a bleed in your brain Right, healthy people should expect to not get, to not be as susceptible to it. Is, um, like no, that's not, it's not the case. Yeah, not the case. I mean, look, and what I will do to direct your listeners: Stroke Foundation website. Oh my gosh, um, oh really? Yeah, cool. It is an, is an amazing website. That's so that's just strokefoundation.org.au. Tons and tons and tons of resources on there, um, particularly about stroke symptoms. Um, you know, reducing your risk. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, the, the, the tricky thing is that, that, you know, stroke can impact on anyone and, and, and it impacts on a lot of people, um, you know, but there are some, some great steps you can do to, to, to lower your risk. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's around sort of, you know, eating well, you know, eating mm, better, mm, you know, mm. um, you know, it's around if, you, if you're a smoker, you got to stop, you know, that's the mm. simple one. If you're a drinker, if you can reduce, great, you know, mm. um, you know, being active. 
I think for me, that was my problem because of this, you know, working from home and, and being in lockdown, wasn't getting out. So unfortunately, this DVT occurred in my leg, um, you know, and, and, you know, as a result, like, again, I wasn't, I wasn't being active. I, I would have hated to think the steps I was doing a day, they would have been very, very low, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So now I'm making sure I'm walking two to three times a day. We're still not doing Ks and Ks and Ks, but I'm trying to hit that 10,000 sure. steps a day, minimum, you know. Um, yeah, so there's... There's, there's a couple of those really simple things that I, I suppose we need to do just to live a healthy lifestyle. And if you do them, then, then great. That's that's going to lower your risk for sure. Um, again, like that comes with a big sort of thing of like, I'm no bloody health professional either. You know, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, yeah, sure. I'm a person who's gone through the ringer um, and now are a little bit more informed. But I'm informed because of the wonderful people at the Stroke Foundation and their website and and wonderful people like my mate Bob, who's the bearded legend from from Wyndham, who's probably listening. So g'day, Bob. <laughs> legend. You did write Bob's Stroke Awareness. Is that not – that's not a, a that's not a, That's not a te- like a thing. That's <laughs> yeah. literally like Bob <laughs> did a Stroke Awareness talk. So it's Bob's Stroke Awareness talk. Well, so um, cancel that question then. I won't be asking about what Bob's Stroke Awareness is. <laughs> but, but you know what? He's, Bob is um, a Stroke Awareness um, speaker through the stroke foundation right so um uh, and and the stroke foundation have a have a bank of stroke awareness speakers who can come out to your organization sporting club community group and and do presentations about stroke awareness i've, I've signed up to to become a stroke awareness speaker but um again <laughs> lockdown means that then they're, they're not running any of the training um so I'm, I'm just spruiking my story where I can mm. um, as, as an individual who's gone through stroke, who just wants to give back and make sure people understand, um, you know, the risks and, and, and be aware, be stroke aware. Um, but I'll be, uh, one day I'm going to be a card carrying stroke awareness speaker. My gosh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Me and Bob side by side, fighting, fighting stroke. Protesting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, we've got we've got Wearing a guy, strokes. a good friend of mine who joins the show at eight thirty every day. Um, he once upon a time didn't have MS, now he has MS, and now right. and now fits himself comfortably, but sometimes uncomfortably as well into um, campaigning. Um, he's aware of all the channels, um, but in particular, I mean, at times he might have felt like a little bit of an imposter. There's people that are worse than me. Do you have any feelings like that? You you were, you were part of um, a campaign of National Stroke Week. Uh, just this year, um, we played that little trailer. Do you feel comfortable doing doing that? Um, has that been helpful for you personally to um, be more public with something that's qu- quite invisible now? Only, yeah. uh, only uh, aside from the people that were with you at the time and went through it, but is that helpful for you to go? Yeah, for I, sure. I had Look, this I, and it's real, guys. Yeah, I, I think for me, my most. One of the most incredible urges I had following my stroke um, and, and receiving the care that I had was was that of I just wanted to pay it forward. I just wanted to mm. give back. Mm. You know, the, the quality of care that I had was 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 so phenomenal. Um, you know, from from the ambos, you know, the, the amazing paramedics to the, the specialists to the nurses to the, the people who pushed the the, the, the the wheelchairs into when you go get your scans, you know, like the experience I had was was just overwhelmingly um supportive and positive um and all i felt was i just want to i want to give back i want to i want to mm. try and do what i can to support these people in delivering this care you know that's how i felt about it you know um and and by raising awareness i've always i've always been into sort of um emceeing um, facilitation public speaking all that sort of stuff so I, obviously i'm well, i clearly like talking garbage you know and i, I actually had some quality content to talk about now you know so <laughs> yeah, i wanted to put my my, my, my trap to good use mm, you know mm, mm. um so i wanted to do that and absolutely absolutely um you know I've, I've you know joined support groups and i've connected mm, with mm. stroke survivors as well and and have seen the devastation of stroke you know um you know but again that motivates me um mm. to to want to raise awareness you know, Love it. it's, you know, and, 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 and awareness of the types, of, you know, the different types for how impactful it can be, you know, because it breaks my heart every time, like on the Stroke Foundation Facebook page, stories come up all the time and it, and, and you see the devastate, like how devastating it can be and absolutely tears families apart and tears, turns individuals' worlds on their heads, you know, yep, yep. Um, and, and so I just want to be able to do anything that I can to be able to support, you know, that stroke awareness, you know, yep. um, 
and and you know maybe down the track even those individuals i don't know like I, like I, I you know there's 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 this passionate side of me that, that i suppose just is, is about empathy and care that i want like i i, I want to lean into that space i want to help and um but but saying that yeah it is it's, it's absolutely it, it's a tricky balance too because yeah like i've, I've got through it and, and fortunately so so luckily and unscathed on sure. the outside as i said you know like I, I deal with my mental you know challenges and my emotional challenges and that will be for a little while yet um you know but um again i'm i'm, I'm lucky and i'm here because uh, i had some good level of awareness um which yeah. was really lucky and and by saying that as well i'm not suggesting that people who are worse off than me didn't have awareness they absolutely had awareness yeah, stroke yeah. can just impact you in so many different ways as well i've, I've put that in there too sure, you know sure, sure. um and just on a side note my, my mum has ms so um for that listener as well much love to you brother um oh well he's know, on every it's... he's on every day at 8 30 he's got his own segment at 8 30 so tell your mum to tune in 8 30 oh, i certainly will i hope he's tracking <laughs> well um yeah my mum's an ms um survivor sure. um of, of of 40 years um you know uh, and he's in He's such a bloody fighter and a battler and and um yeah well you know hats off or beanies off to you as well um, um yeah. your to your friends hey Stu, i got a question it's from your lovely friend shelly she wanted to know um how did you feel in the days leading up to oh, that's, your that's first, a good question first stroke um, any signs no nah, no nah, really normal um shell and and thanks shell um for yeah for thanks shell for connecting us no. up too it's beautiful yeah that's right um no it was it was it was very normal everything was really normal I, I, my dvd like i had this dvd in my leg my leg had got a little bit puffy um that was the only sign um that i didn't act on um i had a puffy leg um and uh, and i put it down to, to just crummy circulation i put it like i buried my head a little bit in the sand it'd been there for a little while like probably a few weeks um it wasn't yeah, right. obscenely obscenely fat like you know but it was swollen you know there was there was a definite swelling in my um leg painful but I, I just um like, did it have any not, like, not, did you not, want to massage not extraordinarily you... no no it was it was achy because it was i just thought it was fluid you know i thought i had some some dodgy circulation going on my mum's right. got dodgy circulation um right. in her legs so I, I i i did a typical bloke thing and and um made excuses for it and <laughs> diagnosed <laughs> it as something not not important yeah of course, of course i did of i did course. a very typical bloke thing where again i should have gone to the doctor you know we do what we don't do doctor. you know it's not hanging off yet you know it's not you know like like it's, yeah, it's what yeah. us blokes really don't do i just buried my head in the sand i probably even googled it you know oh yeah it's probably it's, it's probably the, that it's the least yeah. worst one <laughs> yeah that's right it's the least worst one no nah, it's definitely not that no nah, it's, it's not, not the that top <laughs> I've bad recently, circulation man. I've done yeah it it's not good it's not good so that was yeah that was the only um yeah, that was right. probably the only thing that, that that occurred um but again i i didn't act on that um everything else I, like i felt fine um i felt very very normal it was a very normal day um mm. yeah um, great my lovely wife j- jumped on it just now as well she's she said her grandfather had a stroke and got tunnel vision from it wow got his, yeah. license, got his license taken away and lost a, a fair bit of his independence so, so when you talk about how it can really change your life i mean that's that's something that you thankfully haven't had to but respect yeah. to the same it's called still stroke and it's got so many degrees of absolutely of i can take vision like i read a story the other day of a man who was um yeah now legally blind um following his stroke and 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 again when you say like your world gets turned upside down you know he was uh, i forget how old he was um had children and stuff i'm guessing he was probably in his 50s so he's lived a, a very full and rich life and all of a sudden he now doesn't have his vision um after my stroke i lost a whole bunch of my peripheral vision um mm. fortunately it came back after three days so in terms of that tunnel vision thing i can really like i can certainly relate to that because i could see really clearly what was in front of me wow. um but on, on my left hand side particularly um I, I i couldn't see until you know like you, it's funny you can hold your hands out to the side of your head right and you can generally see them pretty far back i like when they would come in and that like the doctors would check and they would sort of wiggle their fingers you know but they'll wiggle them like if i stand right back here they'll be like you know they'll wiggle their finger hang on i'm doing it on the wrong side they'll wiggle their finger out out here you know <laughs> yeah. and 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 i'll be like yeah i can see that but on my left hand side i couldn't see it until they brought their finger right in front of me like right, right here right, and i was like oh right. there it is so i lost like so my, my vision did go tunnel but fortunately um it, it, it came back and i yeah i wasn't able to drive for about two or three months after after the stroke when yeah right yeah right do you have to go back to vic roads or like you, do you want to keep that do you have to vic roads go oi, 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 oi. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I mean, you have to do the right thing. You flag it with them, and then, um, and then you have to sort of do um, field vision tests. Yeah, and, they'd want to know stuff that through the optometrist, and you have to get signed off from your doc and stuff as well. Um, but again, like when when it happened, they the the doc said, you know, um, the potentially if, if the ton if the um, the preferable didn't come back, that I'd, I would lose my license. But at that stage, I just thought, you know what. I'll happily lose my license, you know, if you know, I'm yeah, here yeah. and I'm, I'm here on the ground, um, take my license, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, that's kind of how I, that I felt about it right at that point in time. It's like, you know, you, you feel like you've just dodged like a, the massivest bullet in the world <laughs> yeah. and, and all they're going to do is take your license. I would, I would have a- absolutely take that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, with that said as well, though, you know, again, like I've been really fortunate. It came back and, and I was able to keep that license. Not that it's any use to you when you're locked down either. <laughs> a lot of things are of no use. A lot of things are getting dusty and um, <laughs> yeah. hold on to a strong. Hold my strong. car is so low case right now. You know, I could resell. My resale value is, is massive at the moment. But, hey, uh, Stu, it was really important to have you on um, because... It's a it's a, it's one of the less severe stories, which is beautiful to hear. It's got beauty in it because it's it's not this crazy. Whoa, what's this? Because you can sometimes think that the worst won't happen to you. So this is really powerful having you on, which makes it real to myself personally. But I think a lot of guys out there, just to check yourself and to be aware. And and I don't think we've t- I've talked about stroke in 20, 30 years. If it was a passing school visit by someone yeah. or you know watch it so um knowing that um there's some very real tips there and i'll remember i can remember four things easy fast yeah what's what is it what's the acronym lucky what did he say <laughs> it's fast. fast remember what's fast arms speech talk no speech is that right time time Pace, um speech and time you gotta remember that troy I should. I'll send you a bloody. I've got a poster. I'll, I'll send it to you. Bring the poster. Put it on the back of my toilet door. I've got to get rid of the times table one because I'm starting to get a lot better. I think it's time to, time to put. <laughs> you're good the, at your times tables. Uh, you're you're, you're, you're to get pretty to... average at your acronyms. All right. <laughs> nah, it's it's awesome to have you, mate, and, and it's really nice to hear you speak. You you are a great speaker. What? Who, I'm down at the dogs. Tell us about some of your work at the doggies. Oh, are you still I was, there? I was involved in the. Um, uh, I, I was. I was. I was Bring in a, as a as a facilitator of the um, Sons of the West Men's Health Program. I know, I know so the they, doggies program as well. Yeah, it's it's an amazing program. Um, they've run for for several years. They now run a Daughters of the West program. Yeah, it's uh you know it's it's a you know uh, I think they've uh, they originally started as like a twelve week program. It's busted down to about a six week program now. Um, yeah, so they, they it's it's just uh, men's and women's health. Um, they they have a health component of it where someone comes in and talks about something physical, social, mental health. Mm. Um, and then they do a physical uh, exercise session, uh, an amazing program. It gets blokes around the table um, talking about health and talking about stuff that we don't talk about, you know? Mm. And, and so I facilitated that um, for, for several years and, and made some wonderful connections there with some really amazing blokes around around the Western region um, of, yeah. of Melbourne. I'm from Werribee. Oh, um, cool. So, so Bunurong land, you know, I'm, yeah. I, I, I heard that bit before. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and did some stuff, um, you know, around sort of Maribyrnong, so uh, Wurrung, um land, um, you know, but cool. yeah, connected with some really wonderful blokes around, out there and um, doggies do a great job. So you can get on, I think it's Western Bulldogs Community Foundation website and uh, they have some great information about the sons and daughters of the West. Absolutely. Unreal. Mate, we've put up the link, strokefoundation.org.au. So thank you for bringing this to attention. It's uh, It might save someone's life. That's how important today is. Stu, I really, I really appreciate you coming on today, man, and um, and keep in touch. Yeah, will do, Troy. You, you run a great operation here, mate, and I thought, you know, when in Rome as well, the beanie, the earphones, <laughs> I was just trying to, you know, um, walk it. the walk, mate. But uh, real pleasure to meet you, my man, and um, yeah, all the best. Thanks, Stu, for your time, mate. Um, we'll see you soon. Cheers, bye.